Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna do a DIY Dollar Tree farmhouse fruit and vegetable stand. Doesn't that look neat? I was inspired by this thing that I saw in a video of farmhouse kitchens and I was like, yes, we can make that, I promise. So we're gonna use two of these tag signs that are in the beach section now, as well as four pieces of wood art. Um, they do have a new one out now, it's a little bit longer. You might be able to get more baskets on, but I have four of those. Now you're gonna use four baskets. You can use these baskets, or I really like these plastic ones that they have now that are kinda of like the stackable ones. But whatever baskets you use, just make sure that you test out that they'll fit. Um, and then we're going to use a screw gun. This isn't 100% necessary, but it is necessary. I'll tell you in a minute. And we're going to use some paint, paint of your choice. Um, and then we're going to make sure you get some Mod Podge. And we'll go over that why in a minute as well. Okay, and then any embellishments or antiquing or any pretty style that you want. So here I am showing you, I'm testing out which baskets will fit across this piece of wood. But like I said, I think that the new signs are longer. So if you get those, you might be able to fit more baskets. Now I'm taking the string off. Um, I know a lot of people uh, just sand down the glitter letters and paint over these signs. But I will tell you in a few minutes, we'll go over why it's important to peel them. I have videos on my channel where you can peel them, but you see here, you just peel off the shiny section and then when you get down to the cardboard section, you just rest a wet dishcloth on it. It becomes so super saturated and so soft, the glue becomes instant soft and you just scrape it off with a gift card or an old credit card or anything. I just wouldn't use anything like a um, razor blade because you might gouge the piece of particle board. Now we're also gonna remove the stickers and I just do this the same method, but you could use heat as well. I don't have a hair dryer and I don't have a heat gun, so water it is for me. Just try not to use any gooby gone because that might leave an oily film that sometimes can affect the paint. Now on these, you guys are always telling me, why are you peeling all the paper? Um, I decided to leave the stickers on there. Uh, not the stickers, I took the stickers off the back. I decided to leave the words on the front and I'm painting this with some white Waverly chalk paint that was gifted to me. I'm just trying to use up all the paint that was gifted to me before I go ahead and purchase any other paint. Um, but I'm starting with the top and the sides and I'm not worried about the ends because we're gonna glue the ends and screw through the ends and you won't see them anyway. But I wanted to give this a quick coat or two before we started screwing them together. I just, sometimes things are easier to paint before you attach them and sometimes they're more difficult to paint uh, when they're attached. So you definitely want to um, see which one will work better for you, okay? Now that the boards have dried, you wanna make sure that they dry, you're gonna go ahead and give them two coats of paint on both sides as well, including the edges. But then again, if you wanna antique it, you don't have to worry about the edges. That's really another piece of personal preference. But I am showing you here that I am putting on the um, second coat of paint on the back. And what I really want to focus on on the back is filling the white paint inside the screw holes. Now you can use uh, wood filler that they sell at the Dollar Tree or you can use wood filler that you buy in the hardware store if you want to fill those holes in. But then you'll just have to wait for that to dry. I know that you also can probably fill them in with a lot of hot glue and then just scrape it over since you're painting it anyway. But we're gonna go over in the end exactly uh, the benefits of, of both, okay? Um, but I just left them because I, I knew that they were gonna be underneath and I knew that this piece in my house was only gonna be looked at from the top down. Um, so we'll get to that as well. But then I wanna make sure I went ahead and I painted the other side as well as the ends again. So I just wanna show you something. Hold on, let me close this. Um, normally I peel this paper off and I don't wanna say people give me a hard time, but they're always like, why do you do that? It's a waste of time, just paint over it. Well, here's the thing. If I can remove it with just water, then water-based paint is not gonna like it at all and that's pretty much what has just happened is I was just putting on my second coat of water-based paint and it's peeling like crazy as you can see so basically I just wasted some money on paint not a huge deal I mean technically it was gifted to me so I didn't waste any of my money but I don't like wasting any money I don't like wasting anybody's money 
Um, but the good news, I guess we found a quicker technique to take the paper off. You don't just paint it in some water-based acrylic. So there's that. What I'll do is I'll finish peeling them and I'll repaint them and then I'll share it with you. Yep, that happened. And I was kind of very frustrated because it was like between the drying time of the chalk paint, it was almost over an hour to do all four of those with two coats. Um, so what I did realize though in doing the first coat was that this red stain really comes through the white chalk paint. So what I've decided to do, and I told you in the beginning we're gonna use, I decided to coat them with Mod Podge. This is the gloss Mod Podge. This will not create a crackle finish. Um, just put it on like a thin coat, kind of sparingly. You want to let it dry on all four sides. Again, you don't have to do the ends. Um, and this way it'll protect the bleeding from coming through to the white chalk paint. Okay. Now I do find this step necessary. Of course, it does add more money to the, to the $10 total or $10 total plus paint and Mod Podge and plus screws, you know, it's like, it sort of adds up as it goes, but um, I had all these materials on hand, so it really didn't cost me anything, but um, I definitely would love to see you guys do this and replicate it. I just was so inspired by the inspiration piece that I had to go ahead and create one for myself, okay? So now I'm just doing all of the sides that we're gonna paint with Mod Podge. You definitely wanna let this one side dry before you go ahead and um, add the paint to it. And then once you do, you go ahead and give it two good coats of paint. And this is where I'm showing you how you fill in the paint inside the holes. Um, I just put a whole bunch of paint down there with the sponge brush um, and then just brushed over the top with it. What I like to do is I like to put a coat on the flat surface, do the sides, and then come back over the flat surface. So what I've done is I've taken the two tags and I wanted to mimic the shape that's at the top of the tag with the poles but backwards so i took one tag and i overlapped it i joined the points there in the corner i put one over the other in opposite directions and then i traced the tag onto the other tag then i measured up one half inch from the bottom and i used the flat edge of the tag from one inch from the bottom and measured those two angles again i just thought it would be really pleasing to the eye for it to be angled that way but here you can kind of see it a little bit better and a little bit clearer Okay, so then I measured a half inch up from the top. I really wish I would have done this to one before I painted the other because it's really hard to see the white on white. But I think you can see the pencil lines as I'm doing it. Okay, and that's how I got those angles that I want the baskets to sit at. So now I've taken the end of the post. I just happen to have a fifth one, but it, yours will be painted white at the time. And I traced around them on that angle. So I put the flat side against that angle. I put one corner against the edge of the board and I did that to both boards. Now here's where the drill comes in. It's not a necessity to pre-drill with a drill through these particle boards. You can do that with a screwdriver or an awl, but it is really important to pre-drill through the ends of these boards. I think we learned this mistake when we were making the wreath holder, but I totally forgot this mistake when I started to put this together. And you may see at the very end, the product, I have uh, splits. I split my board, so um, I right here, I'm splitting the board right here as we speak. <laughs> so I just don't want you to guys have to go through that. Um, so definitely take your drill and pre-drill um, the size a little bit, tiny bit smaller than your screw. What I'm using here is wood screws um, or drywall screws. I, they're um, pretty common. I got them at the dollar store in New York. I get like a hundred for a dollar. Um, but what I've done is I've taken a little drop of hot glue I've put this line, the square up to the pencil lines that we drew before. Then I turned it over and I pre-drilled through the, dr the holes that we drilled on the side into the wood and then screwed through both of those holes. Okay, the inspiration piece had, dr had screws right on the outside too. And I was like, well, if they can screw theirs and theirs is uh, cost a lot of money, I can go ahead and screw mine in. <laughs> um, so that's what you want to do to all four posts on both sides. And you can see there where it's split up there at the top. So, and then I remembered to pre-drill the next board, but the problem was I didn't go in deep enough. So you definitely want to hold your screw up against your drill and mark how deep you need to go, okay? I, I, I know that we talked about this before, but I really want to give you guys some basic drilling and screwing lessons with this drill gun. Um, I, I really, if you guys are still interested, please 
leave them in the comments down below that you want to learn. Um, but if you could see here, because I split the board, it's starting to warp. If you look straight down at them, you can kind of see that they're not lined up perfectly. Um, it's not objectionable to me. It may be objectionable to you. So just keep in mind that before you go on to the next step. Okay. Now I've just gone and I'll show you here. I left one board to paint while it was put together to show you that it's not impossible to paint them when they're together. And then I took the glue and I, um, the, the glue, <laughs> I took the paint and I went over all the screws to make them white as well. And then I filled in whatever cracks. I used the hot glue to fill in the, the splitting and I used a gift card to level out the glue before it dried. And then I took, when it was cooled off, I took sandpaper and I sanded it nice and even and then I painted it um, just to fill in all the grooves. Now, the inspiration piece had this really pretty French sort of milk farm decals on them, but I just wanted to decided to hand paint them. Um, but definitely get your favorite printable, get your favorite Dollar Tree um, art design and go ahead and decoupage it on there or trace it on there whatever you guys want okay I just decided to make a mason jar that said milk I drew it in pencil pencil is very forgiving on this chalk paint which is wonderful so you can erase as you go and then I went over it with a sharpie nothing special nothing fancy um, as you can see here now I'm erasing all of my pencil lines and you can see how well you want to like make sure your, your sharpie dries before you do that Okay, and then on the other side, I decided to do something a little bit different and just to make a basket. It's a very, very simple basket with wavy lines for handles and wavy lines for trim. I put a sign on the front and I put fresh picked five cents. I didn't put anything in the basket. I was kind of like, do I put flowers? Do I put fruit? And I just left it like a basket. Um, and nobody said there was milk in the milk jar, so that nobody says there has to be fruit in the fruit basket. But you guys go ahead and do whatever you can, whatever you want. I'd love to see it on social media, so go ahead and share it with me whenever you can. I really, really do love seeing you guys uh, just create your own. So what I've done here is I decided to distress it a little bit and I wasn't having much luck with the sandpaper so I switched straight to the paint. I was like, I'm not messing around with sandpaper because it's not distressing enough. Um, but this would also look cute if you went ahead and rounded it instead of square, but I like it squared. I'm fine with it like this. Now you can see from underneath, you could see the holes in the, in the board. But like I said, mine is being viewed from the top down. If yours is gonna be viewed on a counter where you're gonna see the underside better, just make the boards backwards make the holes on the inside being hidden by the baskets that's all you have to do now this would be really cute with kids books on it it's not it's very sturdy i will tell you it is very sturdy um, but you'll have to be mindful of how far you put your boards away from each other if you're going to store something smaller on there okay unless you're going to store books in baskets that's a different story um, but what I decided to do, um, because the sanding wasn't working for me, and you can see there, that is a bucket full of paint, this little basket on the bottom, and you can see it didn't even wiggle the, the shelf. Um, I decided to take the ink, it's called ink is the color, it's just black chalk paint. When I peeled the label off, there's like a little, uh, like it's brand new, so I open the lid and there's like you peel off the top. That's how much paint I put on this paintbrush. I just took the paintbrush and I put it off the, I took it off that little sticker on the top. Um, it's just, just very, very minimal amounts. And I went around all of the edges and then I decided to like brush it in strokes. I went with the quote unquote grain of the wood, you know, would be if it was up and down. Um, and I just added some dark and wiped away and added some streaks and just made it antique looking the best that I could. And I, well, you know, the best that I could quickly. <laughs> and then I repeated to the other side. Um, I do like it with the dark edges. It just does looks, it, it adds that worn look to it. Now I was going to dry brush white chalk paint back over the drawings that I did, but I just went ahead and I left it like this with the antiquing black on it. And I think it really has made it, you know, more of a vintage looking feel for you. Now, as far as uh, the way you set yours up, you go ahead and look to which one is the nicest side, the nicest front. Um, but yeah, this is it. This is how it looks like with the plastic baskets in it. This is both sides of the plastic basket because it is universal. You can switch it around and face whatever you want to face whichever direction you want. Um, and then I went ahead and I put the wire baskets in it. I am particularly fond of the wire baskets. I think I'm going to leave the gray ones for their size, but I love the way these look in here. 
So I got, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know it's using tools and I know not everybody's crazy about tools, but it is such a fantastic piece for $10 and $10 includes the price of the basket. Um, so if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to share this video with friends and family, anybody you know might be interested in learning how to make this. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe and when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, take care, God bless, and we'll see you next time. Bye!